good idea. It is kind of crooked, but um, beautiful, huh? Not bad at all. Unfortunately, I can't see any of your comments today because, my, as you can see, my back is to you. No audio. Thank you for that tip. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's try that again. Okay, are we getting audio now? Thank you, Kaz, for that head. Let me make sure everything's turned on. Let me know if you're hearing me, anybody. Yes, thank you, Cos. Appreciate it, man. That's a great help. Okay, whoo! Glad, glad I, glad I caught that. Your comment, whoo! I'd have been talking to myself for hours. Well, anyway, everything I said already <laughs> uh, needs no repeating. Well, it does really. Again, I am in Ocracoke, North Carolina. Beautiful, small island, maybe 10 square miles or something like that. I mean, small. Small island, part of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And um, this is my fifth annual paint out. Me and Mike Rooney get together. He's another full-time artist. We just hit it off, so started getting together about five years ago uh, to paint here. And there are five other, four other, uh, whatever, three to five of us total. Three other guys painting here. This is the first. This is the first time it's been all guys. Normally it's men and women painting, but it just turned out this year the some of the women couldn't come, so it's just five guys. David Foster. Richard Tardale and um, Rusty Forrest. And the other, for anybody's keeping score, <laughs> five of us, me and Mike. Um, and I'm drawing really fast, which means very potentially really inaccurately so again I just I look at I'm, I already moved my horizon once and that's I think that's all right I think it's okay if I put it that far down this is a high horizon image because let's see it's a high horizon image because um, There's a lot of re interesting reflection in the water. Boy, I just, I had better not get locked into this drawing because I, I dare not, I'm doing it so quickly and just flying. Uh, partly because, because the, the light is moving, of course. Today is one of those days when the sun's moving through the sky. <laughs> Moving westward today, from the east to the west. This is one of those days the sun rose in the east. <laughs> um, the building I'm, I'm looking at is actually, it's labeled Ocracoke Working Watermen's exhibit so it's like a little museum yeah, ochre coke uh, year-round population is 1,000 and the uh, it, it swells to uh, probably 10,000 or more in the in the summer so we're definitely here off season which is good for us I, I think 
and uh, boy, I'm, I'm zooming in on this image a lot more than I than I thought I would when I started the drawing. This <laughs> this is definitely we, last night the the artist the other artist and I we were chatting about the advisability of doing sketches before before you start you know a major painting a, a painting and uh, I agreed with them that I think it's a good idea <laughs> it's one of the best ideas <laughs> that I don't do that doesn't mean I don't it's it's like that doesn't mean I don't think I should um, you know I, I think I know I know I'd do better paintings if I did sketches um, it's sort of the partly isn't it it's partly the essence of uh, plain air painting is but most people plain air paint you know six by eight inches and I'm doing of course this is a 24 by 30 not huge but big enough bigger than most people do plain air um, anyway it would, and so <laughs> I certainly feel like this. I'd be better off if I was doing a sketch first. So this is one of those do as I say, don't do as I do <laughs> moments. <laughs> just because I don't, just because I don't do a sketch, doesn't mean I shouldn't, and you shouldn't. <laughs> so, but let me let me take a second. Okay, I'll point you the other way just a second. See. I'm still okay in the sound department. Whoa. I keep getting got audio now. Oops, 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 oops. We got some tricky stuff happening. And some comments. Hey guys, thank you, thank you. Got audio now, appreciate it. And Lulu smiling. There's there's some of the rest. Coke or Coke. Good enough. Hey guys, yeah, so my Mebo camera died yesterday. And uh and so we're back to uh, YouTube and by itself. And one of the things that YouTube does is, as you just experienced, without provocation, notice, or anything, it shuts down. That, ask me if that's aggravating. Yep, that's aggravating. So you missed, I don't know when I lost you, but anyway, so Cape Cod School, the sun, water's in the sun, and it's a greenish color. That means it's mid-tone, it's neither warm nor cool. It's in the middle, so the underpainting for that water is going to be orange. And if you didn't follow all that, <laughs> welcome to the club. <laughs> hey, welcome to the club. So the, this is, there, it's, and again, you can look it up there. You can watch my video from two days ago where I described the Cape Cod underpainting in, in considerable detail. Uh, And of course, I'm not. I'm not going to turn into a Cape Cod. I, I assume it goes without saying. I am not going to abandon my <laughs> method of painting for Cape Cod. What I'm trying to do is add, at least experimenting with, because Mike is here with me, a practitioner of Cape Cod School of Painting. Um, I, I want to combine, of course, my approach to painting with the Cape Cod, and uh, I will post later on. Now, let's 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 do some drawing and see if I can. Straighten out some stuff. <laughs> uh, I guess that's okay. This line is awfully dangerously close to the absolute center of the canvas. But I think that's all right because it, it doesn't read as a line so much. It does quite a bit. But it, because it's got its parallel, it reads as a unit and it's off to the right. Did you catch all that? <laughs> you don't have to believe me. That's for sure. You don't have to agree with me, but that, that's what I'm thinking. So, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, and then a wide one, double one, three, four, five, and inside here. My buddy Rusty, who's painting with us this week, he uh, he's spent all day yesterday painting the same building and in great detail in great watercolor watercolor realism 
Yeah. So I've been watching over his shoulder, having no idea, no, no it, it didn't have any idea I'd be painting the same thing the next day. So there you go. Kind of fun. Uh, now, uh, let me talk a little bit while I'm about Cape Cod. Again, I'm trying to get it firm in my mind. It is not firm. The, the, I've done two paintings. One of them's not finished. I've done two underpaintings and one finished painting in this in this method of painting. And I've learned a lot already. And um, it's different. Now, it, it, there's a lot of overlap with the way I normally paint. So it's not like a, it's not left field for me. There's an awful lot of, that I already do. Do you see that correction, by the way? <laughs> I, first time I drew it there, second time I'm drawing it here. Right, I get, to you students, that's, that's important. That's the kind of thing you do. You do not, when you're drawing for your painting, uh, you don't trust your first drawing. Now, that doesn't apply to you, you people who like trace and project and grid. No, 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 I'm talking about those of us who are winging it. <laughs> painting real, <laughs> drawing, drawing real. By that I mean no, no mechanical means of you know, trying to render the thing. You don't trust yourself is the point. You don't, you don't, you put marks down and you don't put your weight on them. You say, well, maybe it's there. You keep making corrections the whole time. Um, I draw one line when you can draw two. Huh? <laughs> so let, I, I'll try to talk if I can. I'm using a lot of wits just to get this thing drawn today, so I don't know how much I can talk, but I'll try a little bit. Um, the Cape Cod on their painting, <clears throat> there are two columns. If two, two, imagine two categories. Everything that's in the sun, Let's just limit ourselves to landscape today. Everything that's in the sun, everything that's in the shade, okay? And there's a different, in the shade, you want cool underpainting. In the sun, you want warm underpainting. So far, so good. So far, very predictable. You can figure that out, right? Okay, but in, in the cool column, there's warm, medium, and cool cools. And in the warm column, there's warm, medium, and cool warms. Again, if you're a regular of mine, you have no trouble with the notion of warm cools and cool warms, <laughs> right? That, that's, that's not a big, some people really get messed up by that. What? <laughs> okay, so no, there's, there's warm, cool, it's everything by degree. It's, it's, it's a matter of degrees, right? Okay, so in the, let's start with the warm column. Over here in the warm, I'm putting warm over here. That's stuff that's in the sun three colors, red, orange, and yellow, all warm, right? But, and according to the Cape Cod school of thinking, which I'm not going to quibble with, even though some of you know I, I differ in the details, in Cape Cod school of painting, um, uh, pardon me, get my head the The red is the coolest, I agree with that. Yellow is the warmest, and orange is in the middle. I would quibble that, but I'm not going to. That, that's that's just I'm going to go with it. That's what warm is. So there's three warms: red, orange, and yellow. Red is the coolest. Yellow is the warmest. So in your in, when you look at something in the sun, am I still still going? Yeah. When you look at something in the sun, like that water is actually in the shade it, uh, and on the reflection is green. A lot of green. So that's a, is that warm or cool? Green is in the middle. So that you would do orange under the water because it's now the, uh, what else is, the front of this building, it's in pure sun. It's a whiteness, so that's, it's yellow. That's very warm. I'm gonna do, un, I'm gonna do yellow under this white. Everything that's white is gonna get yellow underpainting. The green down here is gonna get orange. The blue 
is cool, right? It's in the sun, it's blue sky is in the sun, and it's a cool, so that's gonna get red. Are you with me? But the next thing is, so you match temperature. The other thing is, however, you also want to match value. And that's, I, there's the rub. That's, that's real different. So even though I'm gonna do, even though I'm going to do red under the blue sky, I'm trying to say this really carefully. You do red under the blue sky. It's going to be a very pale red. Are you with me? What is pale red? Pink. Now, and uh, Cape Cod people agree with me. Thank goodness. I, I, I'd have a real problem <laughs> if they didn't understand that there ain't no such thing as pale red. Um, it has to be pale magenta. Otherwise, it looks horrible. Pale, pale red is a sickly bubblegum pink. So um, I'm getting, I'm probably getting too deep here, but it's, it's. Uh, what I'm gonna do, what I do behind the scene, and I've already lost most of that. While I'm talking about it, let me go up there and do that red again. Okay, I can. Let me do another layer. This time, instead of using water to get my red very thin, I'm gonna use a. Now that's too dark because the sky is not quite that dark but let me just put it down here put it on here and then come back and uh, wipe a little bit off with a rag okay once again okay so that's a, a magenta ish cool purple ish pink with me and then I've got a little bit of reflection of the of the uh, sky down here in the water of course this is one of Forgive me, silly, silly humor. This is one of those days where the water is reflecting the sky. Duh, it always reflects the sky. Okay. So there, under the sky is pink. Now that's a little bit too intense. I think that's a little bit too dark. Just a little bit. So I'm going to wipe some of that off. So that's a Cape Cod mindset. Under red, under a Sorry, under a pale blue goes pale red. Why? Because blue is cool and red is the coolest of the warm column. Now, let's talk. Let's, let's just, let me do a little bit more. I'll come back to drawing in a minute. Uh, I mentioned that the side of that building is bathed in sunlight. Therefore, it gets pure yellow. Now, this is kind of fun in wild for me because I rarely, in my normal approach to painting, I rarely use straight up uh, yellow. I use yellow with, I use a warm yellow. This is, this is a cool yellow according to my language. Now, not, not according to Cape Cod, this is warm, warm, but according to me, this is a pretty cool yellow. But anyway, it works. Uh, I do, I do believe it works. So that's why I'm doing my third attempt at Cape Cod. Uh, I, I, I will end up with a considerably more colorful painting than my, than my normal. So we'll see, we'll see. I don't know if this is just a crazy experiment. I'm gonna do it once and that's it, I'm done. Once and done, maybe? Maybe, I don't know. At the moment, I'm looking for things that are white. For some reason, every time I say the word, white. I, I think of all my southern friends. Dang, you sure sound like a Yankee. And I'm not. I'm actually a red coat. <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> worse than a Yankee. Canadian. <laughs> You're red coat. I mean, worse, worse than, a, worse than a, a, a Yankee. I'm a red coat. Um, anyway, so why? I'm painting why. <laughs> um, and if there's any clouds in the sky, which there literally aren't, but I'm gonna put some clouds in the sky. And underneath the white clouds, again, would go yellow. Are you with me? There you go. Okay, I'm gonna put those, stop brushing here, start, stop painting here for, go back to drawing. Oh my goodness knows, my drawing is not at all nailed down. It's kind of dangerous to 
paint stuff when you're not sure you're painting in the, the right spot. <laughs> it's kind of dangerous. Big shadow. Oh yeah, more, more, let's erase some more here. So, I think it would be fantastic if uh, if my painting career takes a, a huge step forward because I start using this crazy technique. That would, I'm just saying, it would be fun to have a have a, have a you know, painting you know, jump forward. I'm, I'm not sure. So we'll see. It's worth playing. So this is very much experiment, very much experimental here for me. Uh, am I going to do, am I going to, is this the start of something new or is this just a flash in the pan, you know, flash on the screen? I have no idea. Uh, one of the challenges, and again, I'm not going to abandon me to do Cape Cod. I'm going to combine the two. If it works, I will be the, the only person on the planet. <laughs> well, I'm already the only person on the planet. Sort of, it paints the way I paint, so that's no big deal. But I'll definitely be the only person, the only Cape Cod person. You know, I'll, I'll be putting my own twist on it. And you're seeing some of my twist right now, which is uh, overlapped layers. See, a Cape Cod person, I don't think would do any, and of course wouldn't do the abstract underneath. You know, that's enough. I'm, like, I'm not going to try to elucidate all the ways in which I'm different. That's enough. You get enough of that just from watching me. You watch me, you know I'm different. And I didn't even set out to be different. It just happened that way, accidentally. Uh, <laughs> here's a funny, funny commentary. Are we still on? Yeah? Good. Here's a funny commentary. Let me zoom in here real quick. There's a real tiny flag. <laughs> See that American flag? <laughs> it, it's not even a whole flag. It's a, it's so it's so tattered. It's it, there's only half a flag there. Hang on here. Let me. It's been a long time since I did a broadcast with straight from my phone. Um, that gives me an excuse though to put a real flag up there. And I I I will put a real flag because it's a not because I'm patriotic, even though I'm patriotic, certainly patriotic enough. Uh, no, it's because a, a flag is just a nice, nice, nice element. Just a nice element in a painting. Uh, we were, again, there's five of us painting here. I guess he missed all that because my microphone wasn't working. There are five guys here. Usually, this is the fifth year in a row that uh, Mike Rooney and I have gotten together and painted at Oak Ridge. So it's quite the tradition now. And I love it. I, we've had just absolutely had a ball. Uh, we're all working hard. Um, and it's fun to hang out with other weird artists. We all understand weird artists. <laughs> um, um, as we were, I was riding my bike all over the the island the other day looking paint shooting shooting stuff to, to paint and um, came up with a little list in my mind I haven't written it down yet but it might it might be worth writing down someday a list of things in a landscape that um, are very human you can make a very uh, like an, an emotive an emotional human touch it's almost like you can put people in your paintings without putting people in your paintings. Let me, get, let me give you some examples. Um, bicycles. A bicycle leaning against the wall, or a person riding a bicycle, either one. But just if you want to avoid doing people, but you want the human touch, that's the word I'm looking for. If you want the human touch, but you don't want to paint humans, there are a number of things you can do to make it very human without painting figures. A bicycle intimate intimate human connection get it here's another one laundry hanging on a on a clothesline <laughs> so i actually did a, a little water a couple days ago uh, and it included from what we had seen we were out riding bikes taking pictures it included 
um, laundry hanging on a clothesline. Um, and this, a slightly different category, is an American flag. So not quite as, as intimate, but still, it, it, it you know, gives you the feeling. A pair of old boots or shoes, any kind of boots or shoes, you know, on the porch. A dog, an animal. Again, this how you can include people in your painting without painting people is what I'm trying to describe. I got on this subject because of adding a flag. A flag is a sort of a, sort of a, an intimate, in a slightly different way, but a, an intimate object. It might, I think I, someday I might, I might put together a little list of things like that, and it's a list that could grow um, over the years. Oh yeah, there's a, that's another thing you could put, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'm going to, there's some things here I need to, I need to color them just because I'm afraid if I don't, I will, they'll disappear on me. I won't remember what was that, what, you know, what was that thing? Why is that line here? But if I put white and yellow on it, then I'll look for, oh yeah, that white pool, that's what that is. Um, now, here, I, for anybody who, out there who's a Cape Cod aficionado expert, I have one question. There's one color that I can't figure out using the system that I can't figure out what color do you put underneath rust brown orange brick brown in the sun the shade no problem in the sun I can't figure out what and I'm, I'm uh, if anybody's out there it's Cape Cod maybe you can google it Cape Cod what color goes under rust brown and there's quite a bit of rust brown if you do a brick building in the sun right the, uh, and again, because you're not supposed to put the the same color underneath that you put on top, right? So that's a brick chimney. I'm putting yellow for the moment. You know, I'm not sure that that's the right thing. That's something to put right now. Okay, so let's do some more. Let's do some more Cape Cod coloring. Um, more purple. If I want it, it so I'm in, in the, I'm in the shadow realm now, and um, in the shadow, that's going to be it's going to be blue. So purple. It's a shadow. Looks like a shadow kind of doesn't it? There's some things in the Cape Cod while you're doing that are intuitive. Some some bits and pieces like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Then there's some that are not at all intuitive. Um, I'm in the sun. And I've got these pylons. They're pale green. That means they're in the sun. They should be a pale orange. So here, here's where I'm, I'm messing with my system a bit by now, for the moment, painting in opaque colors. And this is the sunny side, sunshine side of these pylons. All the, all the things holding up the, the wharf. Ah, what do you want to call it? that thing? It's just a, it's a sea of high lines. It's part of the charm of this, this scene that I'm painting here. I'll turn you around again for just a second. If anybody who's joined this just in the last few minutes. So basically, that's what I'm painting zoomed in about, you know, about like that. So that's what I'm painting. And that's what it looks like at the moment. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I know it looks like I don't know what I'm doing. It's controlling the camera is 
the phone is a little bit different. Okay. Um, while I'm doing, while I'm doing some more sun stuff, let me, let me go ahead and do some stuff that's in the, they're going to be white. Stuff that's white. Painted white, that is to say. Painted white and... Very lightning at the moment. So again, that that right there, that's that's pretty intuitive. It's in the sun and it's light, so I paint it light yellow. In other words, in the overpainting, I'll be coming back and painting essentially white on top of this yellow. Open it makes sense. That's intuitive. Now the dock, on the other hand, is pale brown. Um, it's in the light, and it's either warm or cool. It's right in the middle, so that's orange. So that dock here, anything that's pale in the sun, showing up as a pale brown. According to my understanding of the Cape Cod School, it should be orange. Right? I mean the light. It, yeah. Now, all, see all this messiness. Right now I'm doing translucent orange on top of a whole bunch of blue stuff. Now that's not Cape Cod, that's Dan Nelson. So it'll, it, will be, it will be interesting to see much how much uh, uh, Dan Nelson I retain and so on and so on and so on. It's dark with the pets in the shade. There would be green. I'll come back and put that later. Let's continue with the and don't forget the reflection. You have to do the reflection in the water. The same color, of course, as the, the object that it is being reflected. So, the roof is, the roof of this building is a dirty brown, again, mid-tone. Yeah, I think, I think, and, Orange is the way to go on that roof. My brain is ticking away here. I'm going to go to some smaller brushes now. Cape Cod meets Dan Nelson. I'm not. I'm not about to do a real hard left, hard right, and start painting like somebody else. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to become a Cape Cod school painter. But if I like the the effect that it has on my paintings, it, the effect would be boosted color. This is clear. The effect is, is obvious. It would be more, for me, more colorful things to paint, which I'm certainly open to that. So these, these pillars, these posts, posts in the search of the four by fours, that's definitely the post. <laughs> Not to be dignified by the main pillar. <laughs> and these posts are white and they're in the sun. That means, are you with me? Both, I'm trying to teach you and <laughs> and keep myself on on point at the same time. I'm 
And those might be a little bit too pale. Like that kind of stuff is live and learn kind of stuff. And I, and I might come back and uh, make them more intense yellow before I finish. But the other thing about Cape Cod is you're supposed to match, except for white. White is sort of an exception. Just because you do yellow underneath white and probably darker yellow. But you're supposed to match um, the value so that at the end of the uh, underpainting stage, um, if you took a black and white photograph of your painting, black and white, it would look like a real or finished painting. The colors are all crazy, but the values are supposed to be consistent. <laughs> I will say, I will say um, I'm having fun with it anyway. I certainly am. The dark shadows, deep shadows are purple. So let, let's get, let me get some real structure going on here. This will help. This will definitely help solidify the drawing. If I can get some of the... Shadows. <laughs> yeah, let me change some blue to that. Now, now that my Nebo camera is dead, I'm really quite upset about that. Um, that means that that I'm shooting straight from my phone to YouTube. And that means that every time I stop a broadcast and start another one, everybody will get it and. And a, a note, everybody that's got the bell on their icon, the I, bell icon, like they'll get a new notification. They'll get a notification with every, so you know, th this right here, this is Dan Nelson. I, I, one of the things I don't like about the Cape Cod is it feels a little too tight to me, at least the way I see others doing it. It's, it's too, too much coloring in the lines. So, and I, it's, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to violate if I need to. I'm going to violate. See, I like I like my the purple in this case. I like it spilling out, spreading out into the neighboring in the underpainted section. I like it spilling out into the neighboring colors, and then where the sun is hitting the water down there, it's a dirty green. So uh, that tra translates to orange. It's in the light and it's neither warm. The green is not warm or cool. It's right in the middle. Um, right? So uh, it's warm mid mid temperature on the painting. And mid temperature in the light is orange. There we go. Are we having fun yet? This should be a little bit darker purple. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> I, don't know if you're, I don't know if you're thinking along with me. Cape Cod. I don't know if I've described it enough, if you already know it, or if you lift it up, you can help me keep score. <laughs> it's like, no, you did that wrong. Right. Yesterday, uh, on my second painting, so I started one painting, a big one, and then made a bunch of modifications to it and set it aside to dry, and then started a completely second painting. Uh, Cape Cod. Hello. Cape Cod painting. And um, and even in the second one, when I thought I had everything down, I, I made a stupid, just a stupid, absent-minded mistake on the second one. So, I, point being, I'm not beyond doing some stupid things here. Oh, whoops. That's the wrong color. Not, not at all. glass that's reflecting 
it's back here, and it's basically sky color that it's reflecting. So that needs to be pale pink. And the trees here in the distance. This is the far shore. A little bit of reflection of them here. They are green. That's too bright. I'll come back and fix that later. So green is underpainted here. Orange. Again, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing all this talking mostly to help myself keep my wits about me. Oops, that's supposed to, those are, that's supposed to be green right there. Okay, let's go back again. In the light. This brown is in the light. It's mid-tone. It's orange. Okay, well, that, that, that's not supposed to be green. Ah, it's orange. mistake I need to fix here, and that is um, the back of this bench is in the shade. The white bench is in the shade, therefore it's going to be purple. It's in the shade, it's cool, purple. Okay. Like what? This side of the house, it's too dark. It's not going to be that dark. Very dark. But then you want to mumble to myself. <laughs> All this mumbling is required by me just to help me keep, keep my wits up. And I'm going to change my drawing a little bit. I'm going to move the corner of the house. Okay, and again, this is the part of Cape Cod that I don't like is that it's, the, it's too circumscribed. It's too carefully painted in the lines, at least the way I see it done. Because I like, I like, my, my underpainting has a lot to do with, has a lot to do with, uh, you know, colors running into each other. So we'll see. I don't know if, I don't know if I'll, if the Cape Cod thing will work for me or not. I do not know. Okay. Now, up here, this is in the shade. Wait, mid-tone in the shade. Oh, it's green. Whoops, it's supposed to be green. Hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I am just as confused as I look. I'm just, yeah, this is so weird. Some parts of this are very intuitive to me. As you can tell, some parts are not at all. Like what? Green? It's crazy. It's, a, it's in the shade, and the three shade colors are purple, blue, and green. Green is the warmest, and that, and, and um, brown in the shadow, then. A warm brown in the shadow is green. Yes, that is correct. I had to think it through three times before I was convinced. Okay, so this is supposed to be green. There we go. There we go. Brown, brown. Now there's, you can do all kinds of browns. It doesn't need to be the same brown. I mean, the same green everywhere. Of course not. No, 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 no. Anything else up here that's brown here? That kind of. Now, here's a something I've done this twice already and I still haven't got it right. My my pink down here keeps fading away. <laughs> That's partly the caprice of acrylic paint. They, 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 you put them on a little bit like watercolor, not nearly as extreme, but they, they tend to become slightly more transparent as they dry. 
especially if it has a lot of meat in there, which of course mine does. It's murky, kind of green, greenish water down here. It's in the light, therefore, it's in the warm column, the light column. And it's medium warm, so it's middle, so it's orange. Orange in the light underneath, orange under green. So I'm doing orange. These distant trees up here, way too, too light and orange. Again, do you want to match the value, the lightness darkness? You want to match the value of the thing that you're painting. Um, but, and then there's one more rule <laughs> that, uh, at least one more, that you don't want, um, equal color underneath, uh, color under color, same color. You don't want orange under orange, green under green, brown under brown, blah, blah, blah. Well, there's no brown under green here. Okay, five and eight, so. This, this uh, whole sign here, it's basically, again, I'm talking to myself, but I'm trying to keep myself doing the right thing. It's painted white, and it's in the shade. So in the shade, it's going to be blue. Uh, blue is cool. Wait, wait, wait. That's the wrong color. <laughs> That's, I got people hanging up galore here. I love that word, the Lord. Let's let, let me do that again. <laughs> it's painted white. People have built it. This is just, just I show you show it to you again. Here's the sign I'm trying to capture. That one right there. Whoa, there's a close up. Got it? <laughs> <laughs> so um Thank you, Dave. Enjoy yourself, Tan. Let go of details. Got it. And it looks like I it looks like I keep coming, coming and disappearing, evidently, from what you guys have some of you Is it shut down? Okay, let go of details. Thanks, David. I'll take that to heart. Um, it's in the shade. And it's cool, so pink goes behind that. Not, not purple. Whew. So let's let's mix up some opaque pink because I I can't I can't be transparent on top of that. It'll just disappear. So opaque pink. So same color as the sky, but oh wait wait wait, much darker pink. There we go. Right. This is blue, sky blue, and of course that that sign up there is is in the shade. No, hang on, hang on, folks. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's in the shade. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's, so here's my shade column. It's purple, blue. I got mixed up for a minute. It's not pink. <laughs> the guy's an idiot. Why would anybody watch him? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, no. <clears throat> I was right. It's purple behind. Purple in the shade columns. <laughs> oh my goodness. See, I look up there and say, well, the, the sign is blue and the sky's blue. So shouldn't I put pink behind both of them because they're both blue? No, because in the warm column, I'm thinking out loud again. So in the sun, orange is red orange and yellow yellow orange red from yellow orange red from warmest to coolest red orange yellow in the sun in the shade it's warmest to coolest green blue purple so it's a, in the shade and it's cool so it's purple but it's a very pale purple because you match values Whew. i'm glad you guys are here helping me if, if, if I wasn't talking to you, would I be doing better or worse? 
it's very debatable. Very, very debatable. <laughs> I'm not sure what the answer is. I, I enjoy your company, though. One nice thing about the uh, not using the Mevo, though, is, is I can see your chat comments. I, you know, they don't disappear instantly the way they do the Mevo. So that, that is the downside of the Mevo camera. Okay, and this, this sign here. So all this stuff that's now pale purple, that's going to be pale blue. Whew. That's making sense, finally, finally, finally. Visually, it's making sense. My eye is kind of seeing it. Yeah, and forget the detail, David says. And I think I think that's the correct impulse, David. Um, <laughs> are you starting to see it? Oh, are you starting to see it? <laughs> I am intrigued. I am definitely intrigued. Now, for sure, one of the things I'm going to do is come back and do a whole lot more pencil on this because I, because I just like the look of the pencil lines, and they've all, almost all got, they've all disappeared with all my changing my mind. And everything. Okay, brown, medium dark brown, green. Uh, in the shadow, uh, in the shadow column, medium. Dull dark brown means dull dark green. And again, I'm just thinking out loud, using your company to help me. So there's just, there's a window up here, and and it's the inside the window from here with all the reflection and everything. You know, it's a dull brown. So dull green, bingo. I got that right. Little by little, I'm I'm getting it right. I promise. Little by little, I am figuring it out. Um, there's a bulletin board. I'll oh, just use the same brown for the moment. This is on my brush. Uh, brown roof in the sun. That's 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 sort of a mystery color. I'm not sure what color to do brown in the sun. <sighs> but I'm going to do I'm going to do orange. And that is I'm going to go back and ask Mike about that some more. I asked him some already, but I need to chase that down. So Mike Rooney is my instructor in this. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody says it looks awesome. I think they're just trying to be nice. <laughs> and it's awesome to see an artist painting. <laughs> it's really awesome to see an artist painting lousy. <laughs> Oh, back here is, oh man, I, I missed a big, a bit, missed a big thing. The, the water, the distant water back here um, is blue. It's reflecting, it's all kind of choppy, so it's just a solid blue. That means it's, it's pink, darker pink, darker pink than what's in the sky, and slightly, slightly more purple and what's in the sky. So I wonder what that means. That does mean I, I'm going to guess I shifted toward orange a little bit. I'm not sure about that. I'm beginning to see there's a lot about this Cape Cod stuff that I really, that I really don't get yet. So this is water. Get it? On the horizon, it's all the way up there. That's the trees on the far side of the horizon. They're, they're underpainted rightly in orange. Oh, and then they've got the same thing over here. Yeah, this is water also. Oh, every time I go around the side of the canvas, I lose you guys completely. Oh, I Things about this Cape Cod that are, as I said earlier, are intuitive, and some things that are up the screen. Some things are really crazy. So we'll see. I may never do another Cape Cod ish painting after today for the rest of my life. I don't know. 
I do know, I do know for sure that I like what it does to my skies. I like that painting it, doing a pink, yellow, orange underpainting my sky is not new to me. That's, I can do that even if I don't keep the rest of the pink pot stuff. See, I'm going to pause here for a minute because I need to really give some thought. In my mind, this is way too mid-tone muted. It's all, I'm going to get a little bit of light yellow, but there, there's not enough dark. And I don't, I don't know, so I'm assuming it's going to be darker. But anyway, I'm going to stop the jabber yet, you guys. <laughs> Let me look at your comments before I go. See if anybody said anything. Nope, nothing. Not, not, not since David said thanks. Uh, and I've been going an hour, so goodness knows. That is certainly a long broadcast. And, uh, whoops, whoops, whoops. I'll come back in a while with my next episode. Thanks, guys, for watching.